Now this dress towel topper set actually looks blue on video, but it's actually a really pretty purple color. And then here is the towel and what it looks like. And then the other style. And this one is coming soon. I'm going to show how to make this grape ring. I'm going to show you how to make this really pretty towel topper. And on video, it looks like this is actually a blue color when it's really a very pretty purple color. And this towel, I think, fits it perfectly. I'm really happy with finding this towel. And you can find try to find a similar towel that has either wine glasses or grapes as the theme and try to match the colors if you can. This is, um, you could tell on video that this is actually the color purple that the towel is showing. Instead of blue, this yarn for some reason shows up on video as a blue color when it's actually a really pretty purple. And the purple that I did with this towel is by Red Heart with Love, which I couldn't find the exact color, but if you um, can find this brand of Red Heart, you can look at the color and see if you like it. Um, it's called Aubergine. But on video, I'm actually going to use, is this is a Red Heart Super Saver, and this color is Dark Orchid. And it's still pretty, but for some reason I just really like that color purple that I used for my original towel. So it's just, just a preference, whatever purple that you like that matches whatever towel that you've chosen. For this project, you're going to need your H or 5 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. And this tapestry needle or I think also it may be called a darning needle, but it has a sharper point. You're going to want to get one with a sharper point on the end. The yarn that I used was Red Heart Super Saver, and this is Dark Orchid. And for the beautiful color that I used for the top, I used Off White, and this is Karen Simply Soft. And then the beautiful bow is Karen Simply Soft, and it's a dark sage. I actually found this towel set at Walmart, and it's by Mainstays. It's 100% cotton, and it came as a set. So I had gotten this towel, and then I also got, these are more like, um, I don't know what they're called. Let me see if I can find the tag on it. It doesn't say on the tag either, but it's more of a, a different texture to it. But it came as a set, so I got two of these with a similar texture, and this one has more of a towel texture to it. And then also it came with a washcloth. And for the beautiful ring at the top of the dress, or the kitchen towel. I'm using these curtain grommets. Whoops, I dropped them all out. But they're perfectly round. And on the back, you have an edge that um, you have to be careful working with your yarn, but I didn't have any problems doing it. The only one um, that caught just a little bit was the side that has the little pointy ends to them, but even that didn't really affect putting the double crochets around. And you get a lot of these grommets in um, the pack. So here, as you can see, I have a lot of them. So for the value, um, to me it was worth it. I haven't priced them at other places like Walmart, but this one is by Dritz Home. And I like the color of them too because it matched the towel. And it will probably match a lot of different towel colors too. 
You're also going to need a button that matches your dress. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is take whatever color that you want for the top of your dress. And in my case, I'm going to use the off-white, Karen Simply Soft off-white. And I'm going to show you how to do a slip knot. So just take your yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. And then put your crochet hook through that loop. And then take your middle finger and your thumb and hold it at the base of that loop. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through that loop for a slip knot. And now we're going to form a chain of 20. I'm just going to show you a few of them so you get the idea of how to form a chain. The first thing you're going to do is take your hook, turn it upside down, and bring it through that loop for one. Two, and you can see how I'm forming a chain. Three, four, and I'm moving my thumb and middle finger up as I work. Five. So go ahead and form a chain of 20 and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. You should have finished your chain of 20 and this is what your work looks like. And now we're going to slip stitch this chain into a circle. So you're going to take your yarn and you're going to go back to the beginning, make it kind of like a U, and take your crochet hook and go through that first stitch you created. And then you're going to take and hold the base with your thumb and middle finger, and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring that yarn through both loops on your hook and that's a slip stitch and then you've made a circle. Now we're going to do double crochets into the ring and at the same time I'm going to be burying this loose, yen, loose yarn in as I work. The first thing you're going to do is chain three. One, two, three. That counts as your first double crochet. Now we're going to do double crochets into the ring and at the same time, I'm going to be burying the loose yarn end. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to go into the ring and behind that loose yarn end. You're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two. And then yarn over and go through two. So now I have a total of two double crochets. So I'm going to do a couple more with you. And you can kind of see how I'm holding my fingers to help stabilize as I work. So I just finished a total of four. And what's nice is you can kind of move them over as you work because you're going to want to do a total of 40 double crochet into the ring. So that's five. Six. So I'm going to do one more with you, but you're going to finish doing 40 double crochets into the ring. So you yarn over, go into the ring, Bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So go ahead, finish completing a total of 40 double crochet around this ring, and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. After you've completed 40 double crochet into the ring, you're going to want to do a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first double crochet that you did. So you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into that top stitch of that first double crochet that you did. You're going to yarn over and you're going to bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and do a chain three. 
one, two, three. So that counts as your first double crochet. But first you want to take and just scoot your double crochets around so they're even all the way around. And then once you have it the way that you like it, you can kind of fold it and see how the collar is going to look on the dress. And then on the back, this is going to be on the back side every time that we start because you can see just a little bit of where you had first started. So that will be on the back. So now we're going to go back to that first double crochet that we did. And now you're going to do one double crochet and then in the next stitch you're going to do two double crochet. So you're going to go into that next stitch bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to do one more double crochet in the same stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So I'm going to do one more set with you. I'm going to do one double crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to do two double crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. When you're, you're back to where you started, you're going to do a slip stitch again into that first, the top stitch of that first double crochet that you made. You're going to yarn over and you're going to go through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And now you're going to do a chain three. One, two, three. And that's going to count as your first double crochet. Now into the second stitch you're going to do one double crochet. So for this pattern you're going to do one double crochet into two stitches and then in the third stitch you're going to do two double crochet. So this is my third stitch. One, two. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. I'm going to do one more set with you. So I'm going to do one double crochet into the first stitch and then one double crochet into the second stitch and two double crochet into the same stitch for the third stitch. One, two. So go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. Okay, so now I did my double one double crochet into that last stitch, but before you do your slip stitch, we're going to do one more double crochet into the same stitch just to add one more. And then we're going to do a slip stitch by going into that top stitch of the first double crochet that we did and do a slip stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and finish off. So you yarn over and bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. Okay, so now you're going to need your yarn markers. And in my case, I just used scraps of my yarn. And I have four scraps of yarn. And to know where to place those scraps of yarn, I'm going to start in the back of the dress and just show you where your loose yarn end is. That stitch counts as one. So you start counting over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
and then you put your stitch marker on that 12th stitch. And then you start counting from the other side. So you don't count the same stitch as you did with your loose yarn end. You're going to count the next stitch over. So this counts as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then you put your stitch marker around that 12th stitch. So then you have two yarn markers in place. So you have your two yarn markers in place for the back of the dress. So now you're going to take the front of the dress and you're going to place your yarn markers there. And how you're going to do that is you're going to take one of the sides. So this will count as one. So you count that stitch that you have it wrapped. So that's one. And then you start counting over two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So put your yarn marker around that 19th stitch. And then you can do the same thing on this side. So you count that as 1. And then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then after you place your yarn marker, you should have four yarn markers. These are going to be your arm holes. This is going to be the back of the dress, and this is going to be the front of the dress. And in the front of the dress, you're also going to have 22. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Now, also, now what you're going to determine is what is your right side and what is the wrong side. So the wrong side is the side that's going to be folded together so that your right side is showing. So here's my back of my dress and here's the front of the dress. So once you've determined which side, put the right side up. So the right side is showing, and then we're going to start doing one of the armholes. So I'm going to start with this armhole, and I'm going to go into the same stitch that I have marked with my yarn marker. So I'm going to take and go into that stitch, and I'm going to go ahead and take the color that you're using for your dress. Go ahead and get that yarn and you're going to hook the yarn and bring it through that stitch. And then you're going to do a chain one. So you yarn over and bring the yarn through that loop for a chain, one chain. And then turn your work over and you're going to go ahead and tie a knot. And you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker at that point. And now you're going to go into the next stitch with your crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. And you're going to do a single crochet. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And now we're going to do a half double crochet into the same stitch. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to go into the same stitch. You're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through all three for a half double crochet. Now we're going to do a double crochet into the same stitch. So you're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And now we're going to do two treble crochets into the same stitch. So you're going to yarn over twice, you're going to go into the same stitch. You're going to bring up a loop. You have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two. Then you're going to yarn over and go through two. 
and then you're going to yarn over and go through two. You've completed one treble crochet. Now we're going to do one more treble crochet, yarn over twice, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Now you're going to do a double crochet in the same stitch, yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, and now you're going to do a half double crochet, yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through all three for a half double crochet, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over, so you're going into the next stitch over, and you're going to do a single crochet. So you're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both, for a single crochet and then you just finished one shell. So I'm going to do one more shell with you. So you're going to go into the next stitch, you're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. Now you're going to do a half double crochet into the same stitch. And now you're going to do a double crochet into the same stitch. And now you're going to do two treble crochets into the same stitch. Now you're going to do a double crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to do a half double crochet. And now in the next stitch over, you're going to do a single crochet. And then you're going to do another shell into the next stitch. So after you complete three shells, come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so you should have finished three shells. Now, what you're going to do is after that single crochet that you did in the next stitch to complete that one shell, now you're going to go into the next stitch over and you're going to do one single crochet and you're going to do one single crochet into the next six stitches. That's two three, four, five, six. So now we need three more shells. So I'm going to do a shell into the next stitch. And after I complete the shell, I'm going to do a single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to do a single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to do my shell into that stitch, that same stitch.
Then I'm going to do a single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to finish my last shell into these last, into this, this same stitch. I'm going to do a shell. And then that last stitch will be a single crochet. I'm just going to go ahead and do it with you so I can show you. And then I finished my half double crochet, so the next stitch over will be a single crochet. And then actually that last stitch, instead of a single crochet, I'm going to go ahead and do a slip stitch. Let me get my, uh, I just ruined, go back into that last shell. I'm going to do my last half double crochet into the same stitch. And then in this last stitch I'm going to do a slip stitch. So you're going to go into that last stitch, you're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off. You're going to yarn over and pull enough yarn to bury into your work. And then you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker on that side. And then you can see how the shells will line up on your dress. So here is the back of the dress. And then here is the front of the dress. And you can see how the armholes look with the shells, the six shells on the side. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and then come back and I'll show you how to do the skirt of the dress. Alright, so this is how your work should look now. You can line up your shells for the armholes and you can see how pretty that looks. And now we're going to start the skirt of the dress. So you're going to take and I still have the right side facing me and I'm going to go into the stitch one of the corners right where the shell ends. I'm going to take my crochet hook and go into that space. Let's see if I can bring it a little bit closer so you can see. So I'm going to go right into that space with my crochet hook And I'm going to take the color yarn that I want for the skirt and I'm going to hook the yarn and bring it through and do a chain one and then you're going to turn your work over and tie a knot And then you're going to take and do a chain three. So you're going to yarn over and go through that loop for one, two, three. And that's going to count as your double crochet. And now we're going to join the armholes. So you're going to go across to the other side. And you're going to go into the same space on the other side. So that's going to be, you can see how I'm folding together the two sides so that they match. And then I'm going to go into that space right below where the last shell joined on the other side. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, 
I have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So I formed a V, double crochet on this side, and then a double crochet on this side. And then you have your armhole. created. These are just loose yarn ends, but you can see how I created my armhole. So now I have the back side facing me. So now I'm going to work across the back side of the dress and then the front side of the dress is facing me. So now I'm going to work two double crochet into this space here. So I'm going to skip two double crochets and work into the space between the second and the third double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to skip two stitches, work in between the second and third double crochet, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So I'm going to do one more double crochet in the same space. Now I'm going to do skip two spaces and do a double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, skip two stitches, work in the space, between the second and third double crochet. Bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Now, I'm gonna skip two more spaces and do two double crochet into the space between the second and third double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, skip two stitches, go between the second and third, double crochet, bring up a loop, so I did one double crochet, I'm going to do one more in the same space, and you can see how I did my pattern across the back, so two, two, four, six, and then up here there's one, two, one, two. Now I'm going to skip two more stitches. So I'm going to yarn over, skip two stitches, and work a double crochet into the space between the second and third double crochet on the previous row. So now I have two, four, six, eight. Now you're going to skip three stitches and work a double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, skip three stitches, and work two double crochet into the space between the third and fourth double crochet on the previous row. Now you're going to skip three spaces again and you're going to work a double crochet into the space between the third and fourth double crochet on the previous row. Now you're going to skip two stitches and you're going to work two double crochet in between the second and third double crochet on the previous row. Now I'm going to skip two stitches again and work one double crochet into the space between the second and third double crochet of the previous row. And now I'm going to skip two stitches again and then work two double crochet. Now, 
you're going to skip three stitches, you're going to yarn over, skip three stitches, and work a double crochet right before the shell. And then we're going to join the other side. So you're going to fold the armhole together. And then you're going to work a double crochet into that space right after the shell. And you can see how you formed a V joining the front and the back side. So you have a V for that armhole. And you can see the armhole, how it's joined now on that side. And now you have the back facing you completed. And we're going to work the front side. So now you're going to skip two stitches and you're going to work two double crochet into that space between the second and third double crochet of the previous row and we're going to repeat this pattern the same as we did on the other side so now I'm going to skip two stitches and work one double crochet into that space Now I'm going to skip two stitches and work two double crochet. And now I'm going to skip two stitches and work one double crochet. Now I'm going to skip three stitches and work two double crochet. Now I'm going to skip three stitches and work one double crochet. And now I'm going to skip two stitches and work two double crochet. Now I'm going to skip two stitches and work one double crochet. And then I have three stitches before the next shell. So I'm going to skip, actually, We're going to do two double crochet, skip two stitches and do two double crochet. And now we're going to join with that first double crochet that we created on that side. You're going to go to the top stitch. of that first double crochet, the top of the V in the armhole. So here you can see how you have the double crochet on this side and the double crochet on this side forming a V. You're going to take your crochet hook and go through the top stitch of the V for a slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to bring the yarn through both stitches for a slip stitch. And now you've joined the front and the back of the dress. So go ahead and now where you've joined it, let me just move a loose yarn in, you're going to go right into the v-space. So take your crochet hook, go into the v-space, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, Yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet.
and that's starting your second row on the skirt. So we did one single crochet. Now you're going to chain two, one, two, and that counts as your first double crochet right in the center of the V-stitch of the armhole. So here you can see the front of the dress forming and then here is the back of the dress. Okay, so now you're going to go back to your first double crochet that you've created and we're going to work into that first the first two double crochet that you created we're going to work into the space between those two double crochet so we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to work right into the space between the two double crochet of the previous row so you're going to take and yarn over and go into that space you're going to bring up a loop you have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So now you can do another double crochet in the same space. Then you're going to do a chain one, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a chain one. And then you're going to do two more double crochet in the same space. Now you're going to take and do one double crochet into to the top stitch of the single double crochet that you did on the previous row. So you're going to yarn over, go into the top stitch of that double crochet, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Now we're going to go into the center of the next V-stitch that we did or the two double crochet that we did on the previous row right in between those two double crochet. And we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, and you're going to do a double crochet another double crochet, chain one, two more double crochet, and then you're going to do that all the way across to the armhole and then come back. Okay, so I just finished the front and now I'm at the armhole so at the armhole you can see how you have a V double crochet V you're going to go right in between that V and just do one double crochet and then you're going to go right into the space between the two double crochet just like you did along the front you're going to do the same thing along the back two double crochet chain one two double crochet and then you're going to do one double crochet on the top of the previous rows one single double crochet and then you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the other armhole and then come back okay so I just finished going across the back of the dress and now I've reached the other armhole and you could see how where we started with our chain three to form the first double crochet in the center of RV for the armhole. 
So now we're going to do a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first double crochet. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch and then that joins everything together and then you're going to do a chain three one two three and you can see how the armhole looks you're just doing double crochets will be going along the side now we're going to start working in rounds again for this next row you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the space that's between the chain one space. Let me see if I can show you a little better. So here, on the previous row, you have your shell, you have your two double crochets, you have your chain one space. So here is the chain one space. And then you have your two double crochet. So two double crochet, chain one space, two double crochet. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into that chain one space with your crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And you're going to do the same pattern all the way around that you did on the previous row. So, so far I did one double crochet. I'm going to do another double crochet. I'm going to chain one. Two more double crochet in the same space. So I just created the exact same shell right above the previous rows shell. Now I'm going to take and do a double crochet, single double crochet above the previous rows, single double crochet. And now I'm going to go into the next chain one space and do the same thing. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So let me just show you. So you can see how I'm duplicating the previous row on this next row. Go ahead and do that all the way around back to the beginning and then I'll show you what to do next. So now I'm back to where I started. So I'm going to do my slip stitch. I'm going to go into that top stitch of the first double crochet that I did. I'm going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And I just want to show you how it looks. So here you can see how the dress is forming along the bottom and then on the back is how it should be looking. So now we're going to, on this next row, we're going to change just a little bit. We're going to add, instead of two double crochet in the shell, there's going to be three. So I'm going to show you what I mean. We're still going to be working into the chain one space of the previous row's shell. So you're going to yarn over, go into the chain one space, Bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So now we're going to do two more double crochets in the same space. So now I have three double crochets in that chain one space. Now you're going to do a chain one.
and then you're going to do three more double crochet in the same space. So that's what your shell looks like now for this row. And you're going to do that in every previous row's shell. You're going to do the three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet shell. Then in every single double, cro double crochet on the previous row, you're just going to do another single double crochet. And then in the next chain one space of the previous row, you're going to do the exact same shell that you did for this row. So you're going to go in that chain one space, do three double crochet, then you're going to do a chain one, and then three more double crochet in the same space, and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So here you can see your new row and what it looks like. So go ahead and finish this pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. Once you've, you're back to the beginning, you're going to do a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first double crochet that you did. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And For the towel topper, we're going to go ahead and finish off here. So you yarn over and bring enough yarn through to finish off. Now you want to take all of your loose yarn ends and use your tapestry needle to take those loose yarn ends and bring them to the inside of the the dress. And then once you bring them all on the inside, you can take and either bury them or kind of hide them on the inside. Just going to show you. So here I have a loose yarn end. It's going to take my tapestry needle. And I want to make sure I keep it on the same color of yarn so it doesn't show through the other side. And just kind of bury it in towards the inside of the dress. And on the inside, you can leave a little bit of a loose yarn inch. On the inside, no one's going to see it, and it won't come through to the other side. So go ahead. Take all your loose yarn ends and bring them into the wrong side and then come back. So now you're going to take your kitchen towel and you're going to fold it to where the length that you want your towel to be. And then once you have the length, the size that you want, you're going to take and fold your towel across and the same on the other side. And for my towel, I'm going to fold it to where the two sides meet. But you don't have to. You can make it bigger if you want by folding it this way. So that your towel is like that. But just make sure that however you fold it, that it's going to fit on the inside of your dress. So for mine, I'm going to fold it so the two sides are equal but meeting in the middle. So you can measure it if you want to make it exact. I'm just kind of eyeing mine and that looks about right. So then I'm going to turn it over and make sure that I like the way the front looks, which I do. And then once I have it the way I like it, I'm going to take, make sure that your dress, you have the front 
The back side, you can barely see the, the seam, but I can see mine just barely on the back. I want that on the back. And then the front, this is what I want for the front. So once you've decided which, how you want the dress, you just take your towel and put it into the bottom of the dress and make sure you have it lined up the way that you want it. Now before we sew the dress onto the towel, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the, the bow that goes across the front of the dress. I'm using dark sage yarn or Karen Simply Soft and the first thing I'm going to do is start with my slip knot so I'm going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop and then I'm just going to take my crochet hook and put it through the loop and I'm still using my H crochet hook or 5 millimeter crochet hook I'm going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for my slip knot and now I'm going to form a chain of 80 so I'm just going to show you a few, few to remind you how to do the chain but you just turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one two three four see how I'm making a chain I'm gonna do two more five six so go ahead and make a chain of 80 and then come back once you finished your chain of 80 then you're going to go ahead and finish off you just yarn over and bring enough yarn through the loop to kind of sew the bow onto the dress and then you can just take and push down and pull on that loose yarn in to kind of make a tight knot at the end and you're going to do that on the other side as well and then take your dress and I'm going to put the bow on the side <clears throat> I like the bow over here so I'm going to start weaving at the bottom right where the color changes are for the dress I'm just going to start weaving my yarn in and out and I'm going to skip a couple just so that the green will show on the outside I'm just going to skip one to come back to the front and then I'm going to skip three and then I'm going to come up right before the armhole because when I go around the armhole I just want to have a little bit of green going ar around the armhole and then I'm just going to go down and then I'm just going to skip one and come back up and you're going to do this all the way around back to where you started and then come back so here you can see how I reached the beginning and I just made sure that the two lengths are pretty equal and here you can see how it looks in the front and then how it looks in the back and then now I'm going to tie my bow. Once I have my bow tied the way I like it, I'm going to take my tapestry needle and put it on the loose yarn end and I'm just going to take and go back into the chain and sew it in place to the front of the dress only. And then I'm just going to take and sew down the bow and then when I run out of the smaller loose yarn end I'm going to take the longer yarn end that I left for sewing and then I'm just going to sew the bow into place and this is what mine looks like after I've sewn my bow in place. Now you're just going to position it at the top of your kitchen towel. Now you're just going to place your kitchen towel inside the bottom flap of the dress and make sure that it's even and that your dress is straight on top of the kitchen towel. 
And then you're going to take your tapestry needle in the same colored yarn as the bottom of the dress and you're going to come up from the back side with your tapestry needle and you're going to come into the front and make sure that you leave enough yarn in the back for sewing and then you're just going to take and sew this corner of the towel to the dress and then making sure not to mess up the pattern on the front as you sew. Now I'm going to go ahead and just tie a knot on the back And then I'm just going to keep sewing this side. So I'm going to go back through to the front. Making sure that the back still stays nice and neat. And you're just going to keep sewing the towel in place on this side. And I'm just going to go through one more time. Making sure that these don't get tangled. And you can go, you can sew it as many times as you want. I'm just going to sew it a few times on this side because that's going to hold really well. And then I'm going to work my way back towards my loose yarn end. So I'm going to keep sewing. And then once I'm back towards my loose yarn end on that side, I'm going to turn the work over and just tie a knot and then I'm going to cut the end long enough to where I can bury it in the work later and now I'm going to take and sew the other side Make sure that your work is still straight, the towel is still straight on the dress, and then you're going to take and come up from the wrong side to the front. Make sure again you leave a long loose yarn end, and then you're just going to sew this side to the towel. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. So go ahead and do the same thing on this side that you did on the other side and then come back and I'll show you how we sew the middle. So now I have the two sides sewn on. I still have some yarn in my tapestry needle and I'm going to come up through the center from the wrong side. So I'm going to take a spot and go through the center through to the front and again you're going to want to leave a loose yarn end on the back and you want to make sure as you sew that you're not messing up the design on the front
and then you're just going to sew the middle on. So go ahead and finish sewing and then come back and I'll show you how to bury the loose yarn ends. Now you just take your loose yarn ends with your tapestry needle and you're going to go in not towards the front of the tail but towards the center of the tail making sure you don't go through to the front just go into the center of the towel with your loose yarn end and then once you go into the center and it's hidden you can just cut it a little short so it doesn't show through so this is how your finished kitchen towel looks so far and here is how the back looks now I'm going to show you how to do the loop that goes at the top of the kitchen towel. Okay, so now you're just going to take whatever you're using for your ring that you want to put at the top of your towel. And I'm using the same color as the top of the dress. And I'm just going to take and tie a knot first. So just loop the yarn through and leave a long enough yarn end for burying into your work and just tie a knot and then I'm going to take my crochet hook and go through the inside of the loop and I'm going to bring up a loop and then I'm going to yarn over and chain one two, three, actually I'm going to chain one more and now you have three chains one, two, three will count as your first double crochet and now you're going to just keep doing double crochets into the ring until the ring is completely covered So I'm just going to do a few with you. And what's nice is you want to do the kind of loose so you can fit your hook through and make your stitches. You can just move the stitches over as you're working. So make sure that you have a loose loop, not too tight. You can see how tight you don't want to get it too tight because you want to be able to fit your crochet hook through the loop. So kind of a loose loop, yarn over, go into the inside of the ring, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So you're going to keep doing those double crochets all the way around. And you're going to keep scooting the stitches over as you work until the ring is completely covered and then come back. So for mine I ended up with 45 double crochet around the ring and now I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first double crochet and then I'm just going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then I'm going to finish off yarn over and bring enough yarn through for sewing. And then here you can see how pretty it looks. Now you want to take your tapestry needle and put it on the yarn end that you left for sewing and just line it up with the top part of the dress. And then you want to go down into that top row of the dress. And you want to go through both sides and then you're going to come back through the ring just right above that bottom stitch and 
and then you're going to go across to the next stitch on the ring and then come out through the stitch on the ring and then you're going to go back down through that top row on the kitchen the uh, dress and then you're just going to sew the ring in place and this is how the towel looks when you're done on the front and then on the back this is how it looks and now I'm going to show you how to do the strap at the top so you can hang the towel onto your oven. Now you're just going to take the same color yarn that you used for your dress and we're going to do a slip knot so you just take and fold your yarn over on itself to form a loop and then take your crochet hook, I'm still using my H or 5 millimeter crochet hook and then you're going to hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb and you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot and then you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So go into the second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to do a single crochet into every stitch back across and then in the last stitch did my single crochet now you're going to chain one turn your work and here you can see at the base of the stitch there's a little upslope. You're not going to go into the base of the stitch, you're going to go into the next stitch over to do a single crochet. And then you're just going to do a single crochet into every stitch back across. And here is a little bit tricky because there's two stitches left, but you can't really see that last stitch there. So make sure you don't forget it. Go ahead and go into that last stitch and do your single crochet. And you should still have six. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you're going to chain one turn your work and then do a single crochet back across and you're going to do this for however long you want the strap to be that will hold your kitchen towel onto the oven I'm going to finish 20 rows and then come back so keep making your strap the length that you want it to be and then come back and I'll show you how to make the buttonhole. So I just finished 20 rows and now I'm going to do the buttonhole. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one, turn my work, and then do one single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then skip two stitches and do a single crochet into the third stitch and a single crochet into the last stitch. Then I'm going to chain one, turn my work, do a single crochet into the next stitch, and then where I did my chain two. I'm going to do two single crochet into that space. So I'm going to go into that space 
and do a single crochet. And then I'll do one more single crochet in that space. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to do a single crochet. And then I'm going to do a single crochet into the last stitch. And then I'm going to finish off. Just going to yarn over and pull enough yarn to bury the loose yarn in into the work. And now you're going to bury your loose yarn ends. So you take your tapestry needle, put it onto your loose yarn end, and then you're just going to take and weave. I'm going to use this side as my right side, and then this is going to be my wrong side. So whatever your wrong side is, you're going to take your tapestry needle and just weave your tapestry needle through the back. And then you just take and cut your loose yarn end. So go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends. Should only have one other loose now, yarn. Now, with these buttons that I'm using, my ta large tapestry needle will fit through with the yarn, which is really nice with this type of button. So I'm going to take my button and I'm going to place it at the other end of the buttonhole. So the buttonhole is going to come down over the button. So I have my button on the wrong side, and then this will be the right side. So once you have your button in place, just going to take your tapestry needle with your yarn, or you can just take a regular sewing needle and thread and just sew your button in place. And I'm going to leave enough of a yarn end to bury into my work. I'm just going to tie my knot. And I'm just going to go a second time through the button to find the hole. There we go. And that's what's nice about using the tapestry needle and the yarn is it really holds the button on there nicely. And then it's going to tie another knot and then bury my loose yarn ends and then come back and we'll see the finished product. And here is your kitchen towel. So this is where you would stop if you wanted to make the towel topper. But if you want to continue on and make the dress, then I'm going to show you how to do that. So now, after you finished the one row of the shell with the three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, and you slip stitched that last stitch together for that row. You're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And now you're going to go into that chain one space of the first shell. So you're going to yarn over and go into that chain one space of that first shell. And you're going to do a double crochet. And for this row, you're going to do three double crochet into that chain one space of the previous row's shell. And then you're going to do a chain one. And then you're going to do three more double crochet into the same space. And then that's what the shell is going to look like again for this row. So then in your next double crochet in the previous row, you're going to do one double crochet above that double crochet. 
and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back and when you get back to your first chain three or first double crochet you're going to take your crochet hook and go into that top stitch of that first double crochet and then you're going to do a slip stitch so you yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch to finish that row and then you're going to chain three one two three and then you're going to work in that first chain one space of that shell but this time you're going to do four double crochet into that chain one space one two three and four now you do a chain one and then do four more double crochet into the same space so you can see for this shell now it's going to be four double crochet chain one four double crochet and then in the double, single double crochet in the previous row you're just still going to do one double crochet above that one and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then I'll show you how to change colors okay so I just finished my last shell and I'm going to do a slip stitch into my first double crochet just going to yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch to finish that row and now I'm going to change colors so I'm going to use the same color that I used for the top of the dress and I'm just going to hook that color and bring it through and then I'm going to chain one and then turn the work over and then cut my previous color and then just tie a knot Now you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to work into that first chain one space, the shell of the first chain one space. So you're going to yarn over, go into that chain one space, and you're going to do four double crochet. There's one. two, three, four, and then you're going to chain one and do four more double crochet So that's what the shell is going to look like, just like the previous rows. And then you're going to do a double crochet into the previous rows, single double crochet. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the beginning. Okay, so I just finished my last shell. Now I'm going to do a slip stitch into that first double crochet that I did. So yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook to finish that row. And now you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to work five double crochet into the chain one space of that previous row's shell. So go into that chain one space and do five double crochet. One. Ok, 
Okay, so I have five double crochet in that chain one space. Now I'm going to do a chain one and then do five more double crochet into the same space. And that is what the shell is going to look like for this row. And then you're going to do a double crochet into the previous row's single double crochet. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. Now you can go ahead and do a slip stitch to the first double crochet that you did. And then we're going to change colors. So you're going to get the same yarn that you used for the main color of the dress. And then go ahead and hook it and bring it through the loop. And then you're going to do a chain one. And then turn your work over so you can tie a knot. And go ahead and cut the previous color that you were working with. and then just tie a knot and then you're going to take and do a single crochet in the same space that you joined colors And then you're going to do a single crochet into every stitch to the first chain one space. So one single crochet into every stitch until you get to the first chain one space. And then when you get to the chain one space, you're going to go into the chain one space with your crochet hook, bring up a loop and do a single crochet and then you're going to chain three one two three and then you're going to do another single crochet into the same chain one space and then you're going to go back to doing one single crochet into every stitch So you're going to do one single crochet into every stitch except when you get to the chain one space and then you're going to do a single crochet, chain three and single crochet in the same chain one space and then one single crochet in the rest of the stitches. And you're going to do that all the way around the bottom of the dress back to the beginning. Now when you get back to the beginning stitch, you're going to go into that first stitch and we're going to do a slip stitch so you yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch and then you're going to finish off, you're going to yarn over and pull enough yarn to bury your loose yarn in into your work. Now you're going to take your tapestry needle on all of your loose yarn ends and take them and bury them on the inside of the dress just kind of weave your tapestry needle and make sure that if you have the different colors that you bury them along that color yarn so you don't mess up the front of the dress. Just kind of weave your tapestry needle through and then cut your loose yarn ends and then come back. To create the bow for the dress you're going to take the color that you want for your bow. In my case, I'm using the dark sage. And you're going to go do a slip knot. So just take your yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. And then I'm still using my H hook or 5 millimeter crochet hook. And then I'm going to hold it at the base with my middle finger and thumb. And I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. 
and then you're going to make a chain of 80. So I'm just going to do a few with you. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish making a chain of 80, and then come back, and I'll show you how to tie the bow. After you finish your chain of 80, go ahead and finish off. You're going to yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the bow onto your dress. Now you can take the short end of your chain and I like to tie my bow on the side of the dress. So I'm going to go in to the side that I want to do the bow and then I'm going to come up from inside and then I want to go across three so that I get a lot of the green showing through and then I'm just going to come up after one double crochet and then I'm going to go down after three double crochet you can see how I'm weaving in and out between the cream color the off-white color and the purple and then I'm just going to come up before the armhole because I want to have the green color across the armhole and then I'm going to go back down and do the same thing all the way around back to where I started. So make sure that you have the front of the dress facing you where the bow is going to tie and then the back you can see the area where you have your seam just barely but um, you can see it. So make sure you tie your bow on the front after you tie your bow, you're going to take your tapestry needle and put it on the short loose end. And then you're going to sew it in place. So you're going to take through, you're going to sew right into the front part of the dress, making sure not to go through to the back. And then you're just going to take and sew that smaller end, end just sew a little bit and then just leave the loose yarn end on the inside and then you're going to take the longer end that you left for sewing and then you're going to finish sewing the bow in place the same way so you're just going to take and kind of position the bow how you want it to look on the dress and then take your tapestry needle and go in through the end first making sure to only go through the front part of the dress and not all the way through to the back and then you're just going to sew go in and out sewing the bow in place And then you are all done with the bow and this is how it looks. Now this dress towel topper set actually looks blue on video but it's actually a really pretty purple color. And then here is the towel and what it looks like. And then the other style And this one is coming soon. I'm going to show how to make this grape ring. 